Hey, it's your pal Dev. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, I know that at one point in your life, you probably wanted to be a celebrity. You're fascinated by the lifestyle of these beautiful and rich people. Well, today's guest is former celebrity personal assistant, Brian Daniel. And let me tell you something. He knows a thing or two about working with A-list celebrities, billionaires, or even royalty. He is now a staffing consultant and career coach and also author of Dream Careers, the tutorial for finding elite personal assistant jobs. Brian, thank you so much for your time. And right off the bat, I'm curious, were you always fascinated by celebrities growing up? It's a very interesting story because back in the late 80s, I was an assistant, a part-time assistant to someone who installed high-tech uh, equipment and cars. So back then, mobile phones were in their infancy, and they people were walking around carrying them in briefcases, basically. And that was at the time when people were also putting those high-tech stereos in their car, aftermarket stereos like Alpine and Blanc Pont. So one day I go to work, and my boss says to me, we're going to billionaire Jack Kent Cook's house to install a phone and his limousine. Now, Jack Kent Cook is dead now, but at the time, he owned like half of LA and New York. He owned three sports teams. And this was right around the time when the Washington Redskins went to the Super Bowl. So we went to his ranch, and it was just like you expect in a movie, like Daddy Warbucks from the, the Annie movie. He had a huge entourage of people around him. And we were working in his limousine, and then he jumped into the car and said, we have to go right now. We are in the middle of installing this used mobile phone in his used limousine, because he was very thrifty, like some billionaires are. <laughs> and it was just such a wild experience, and I always became really fascinated. And then when I eventually moved to L.A. later in my life, after I graduated from high school, uh, my first personal assistant job on the West Coast was working for a member of the Johnson and Johnson family. So that, you know, sold the seed, so to speak, and things grew from there. Wow, okay. So so you were talking about how, uh, how um, he had a, a big posse and stuff. How many people usually work for for these celebrities uh, on average? Because we know a celebrity is, is a person, but it's a business. So how many people work around one person usually, or for that one person, you would say? That is a terrific question, and I have a terrific answer for you. And the answer is, it varies wildly. Now, some billionaires, like Warren Buffett, for example, he's not my client, but people like Warren Buffett are incredibly conservative. They travel very low-key. And other billionaires like to have a flashy style. And then they have huge posses with them. So there really is no rhyme or reason to it. It depends on how flashy the person wants to be and how high their profile is. So uh, CEOs and celebrities are almost one and the same because sometimes you'll see these huge A-list stars. They'll only Sometimes, actually, they'll be by themselves or they'll only have one person with them, perhaps their assistant. And then sometimes they're walking around with 20 people. So it really depends. That's that's the best answer I can give you. So I guess the question should be, how many do they need? That is another great question. So it also depends on how high their profile is. Now, what you would expect if you're working for a very high-profile A-list celebrity or a celebrity CEO, you're definitely going to be traveling around with a uh, a head assistant and several subordinate assistants. And then if they have their kids with them, you might have nannies. And depending on what's happening that day, you know, you might have lawyers with you and a publicity agent. So I've been in situations where I was the only person and the entourage. And I've also been in situations where there were 15 people with us. So it does vary wildly. And which one do you prefer? Do you rather be alone, or do you like it when there's a, a big, a lot of people around? Honestly, in my older age, I do prefer the low-key gigs at this point in my career. 
uh, when I was much younger, I have to admit, flying around on private jets and being in the big posse was pretty exciting. But there's a trade to that because when you're in those sort of bling bling situations, you know, you're going to be up all night. You know, your boss might keep you up till two o'clock in the morning because you were at a nightclub with them and then he can sleep in. But then I would have to get up at the wee hours of the morning because my phone started ringing and I had to set his day up for whatever we're going to be doing. And I had to keep my appointment. Oh. So, yeah, I like the low-key jobs better now, honestly. Okay, so you talk about private jets and all that kind of stuff. Just to give us an idea, who who are some of the people uh, that you've worked with? Well, honestly, I have confidentiality agreements with my clients, both as a headhunter and when I was a personal assistant. But what I can say, without mentioning a specific name, is that I did work for the Saudi royal family. That was probably one of the most exciting gigs that I've had. Um, I did that for about two years, and I was an estate manager at properties all over the world, and I was traveling around on private jets, and I was in charge of exotic car fleets. And since there are more than 10,000 members in the Saudi royal family, I can say that name comfortably without having to mention my boss's name. And who's more demanding, royal families or A-list celebrities? Oh, that's a tough one. So, again, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It depends on the employer. I've uh, met some really amazing, darling people like Mariah Carey, for example. Uh, I met her on a number of occasions, and she is a real sweetheart. And then, of course, I've met the divas that like to throw things at people. And uh, royal family members are just like any other person. They can have their bad days, so it just really depends. Okay. Now, is this a job that is out of reach for people? What kind of background do you need education-wise, or how do you get that? Maybe some people are saying, oh, you know what, it looks great in the movies and everything, but eh, it's never going to happen to me. Is it possible? That is a terrific question. So I have an amazing statistic for you. So when I started my business, I started doing a lot of research, and I learned, uh, firstly, that there are now are more than 2,000 billionaires around the world. In the U.S. alone, there are about 50,000 households that have net worth between 50 and $500 million dollars. The opportunities now to work for the ultra-rich have never been more plentiful. There are incredible opportunities out there for executive assistants, estate managers, personal assistants, and nannies to work for ultra-high-net-worth families. And frankly, it's tough to fill these roles because... The demands are so great. It goes beyond skill sets. It goes beyond having the BA degree or even a master's degree. Now, years ago, uh, I would say 20 years ago, a lot of assistants didn't have college degrees. I would say most of them didn't. Now there's been a huge shift in the industry to what I call hybrid positions. And in the old days, what they did, the the VIP, whoever that was, would have a personal assistant handling handling all the personal life and working out of the home office. And then they would have the executive assistant that did all the corporate stuff in the office. And now people are bringing these roles together. And so it is a little bit of a situation with old dog, new tricks, because all of those old school celebrity assistants who did not update their skills and learn things like Microsoft Office Suite, front to back, top to bottom, have become obsolete dinosaurs. And what a lot of employers are looking for now are two-in-ones and even three-in-ones. So, for example, it would not be uncommon for me to get a gig where they're asking for someone who can do some light cooking duties, 
someone with some child care experience because they might have to pick up the kids after school, and then a little bit of personal assistance and some executive assistance in there. So these roles, the lines are becoming blurred, and it did not used to be like that 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm guessing, though, that this job is, because it's not like, uh, um, I don't know, uh, uh, jobs where, okay, you get out of school, you can go do it, and you're good if, if, if uh, technically or educationally you've got the right tools. It's more, it's also people being a people person, something that's hard to calculate, and I'm guessing that uh, y you, you have to try a personal assistant in order to know if it's going to be good, right? Because... It, how do you gauge in an interview if, uh, I don't know, you'll be good or not for that specific person? That You bring up a really terrific point. So just because somebody was an executive assistant to a Fortune 500 CEO does not mean that they're going to be a good fit for another Fortune 500 CEO. Um, above and beyond the skills that are required, the basic and advanced skills that someone has to have. And the entertainment business, they call it lightning in a bottle, right? So if they're trying to cast a lead actor for a role and they're looking for a star, they don't really know who they want until that person walks in the room. And in a way, it is the same thing with pairing an executive assistant with a celebrity or a billionaire or a prince because there's something that happens. There's a professionally speaking, there's magic that happens in the room during the interview where people just click together. And I said it before, professionally speaking, it is like a marriage hmm. because <laughs> the assistant is going to be working with their boss minimum five days a week, often six days a week, 12 to 16 hours a day. And the assistant is going to be with the principal more than the principal is with their spouse or their boyfriend or girlfriend. So it, it is like a marriage. And, and so when employers come to me, they're asking for that special match. They, you know, because they give me the job description and say, okay, here's the, you know, kit and caboodle. This is everything that we want them to have. Now, let me tell you some personality traits that I'm looking for. And then we really start getting into the minutia and the nitty gritty of those sorts of situations. Yeah, well, you mentioned the, the work hours. That's probably uh, one of the toughest things. What else is really tough or, or not easy to deal with when you're dealing with someone who's uh, a billionaire who's I guess can buy whatever they want what's what's some of the some things that people probably don't know about the job that's not so glamorous yeah you you have a lot of great questions Dev I, I really like your style so the thing is that people have to understand is that this is a business so it does look fun in the movies. It does look fun when people go to my website and they see all the pictures of me in the private jets and driving Lamborghinis. But one thing I have to stress, and when I'm interviewing the candidates, I'm very clear about this. It is an incredible sacrifice in your time. You really have to love it. So this is a career. And to be successful in any career, if you want to move up, you have to love what you do. So I know a lot of assistants who started in the business 20, 30 years ago. They never got married and they never had kids. They really didn't have time. And that was okay for them. So at some point after you've done it for five years, 20 years, and you're starting to push 15 or 20 years, People have to do some deep soul searching and they say, well, am I going to keep going with this or am, are they going to do what I did where you take a step back and you either start your own company or you do some sort of uh, side consulting or something. But I know a lot of people, again, that, that have, been in, have been in the business for you know decades and they just didn't have time 
to have kids. So you really have to think about what your five, 10 and 20 year plan is going to be. 